Hello, my name is Ricky Church. I'm for Flickering Myth, and I'm here with Billy West, who is here to talk about the 25th anniversary of Space Jam, where he played the iconic Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. Um, and you'll also know him from other animated series such as Disenchanted or Doug, or of course, Futurama. So how are you doing, Billy? Good, good, what about you? I'm doing well, thanks. All right, so uh, as I said, um, this year is the 25th anniversary of, of um, Space Jam. So how, how does that feel for you? Um, I couldn't wait for 4K so I can see the makeup on Bugs Bunny's collar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what people say when they watch 4K TV. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. You can see the makeup on the newsman's neck and on his <laughs> collar. Yeah. What else good is science for, except for stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Detail should be cool. Um, so in, in Space Jam, of course, you voice uh, Bugs Bunny, um, one of the most iconic uh, cartoon characters of all time. Uh, what did that mean to you to, to play him? Did, did you grow up watching Bugs Bunny and the rest of the Looney Tunes? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, and I got to work with Michael Jordan too, Doc. The closest thing to a religious figure that we have. <laughs> um, I um, I grew up watching those, of course. Yeah, I, in the fifties in Detroit, we used to get um, we used to get our channel, one of the channels from uh, Windsor, Canada, and um. It was Channel 9, CKLW, and they used to show the Warner Brothers cartoons, except back in those days, they were films of films of films with a million generations removed. So they were just dreadful to watch, but you could hear them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. I sat by the TV and I just was like, I was blown away always by those kinds of things and, and other animated things, fantasy, sci-fi. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, cool. Um, now, Space Jam, it's got such a funny and weird concept to it. Um, like it's, it's a live action animation hybrid where uh, Michael Jordan plays himself helping Bugs and the rest of Looney Tunes in a basketball game for their freedom. So um, what, uh, what did you think of Back back then, when when you like first heard that pitch and came on to the project, what were your uh, first thoughts? Well, I thought I thought there were two winners because number one, you can't go wrong with sports, and you've got a legend like Michael Jordan, and then the Looney Tunes are evergreens. You know, mostly everything mm -hmm. they do with them um, is a success, and um, you know, I I felt like that pairing was was kind of you know something that was a no-brainer mm -hmm. when i think about it um and uh it was fun to do it was great working with the other actors that i worked with and we had so much fun recording it and i'd be recording and everybody every other person that stuck their head in the door was like he sounds too jewish <laughs> he sounds too cute nah he's more brooklyn you gotta make him more brooklyn and i'm like eh shit it <laughs> nice um so kind of something that you just alluded to uh space jam is filled with a pretty big um all-star voice cast uh there's yourself uh d bradley baker who plays mm -hmm. daffy and a few other voices um Maurice LaMarche and uh, a ton of others. So yeah, how, yeah. how fun was it to play such big legacy characters like the Looney Tunes with those guys and getting to, you know, just joke around and just it, do this it was, with them? It was great. They're all brilliant, brilliant performers. Um, you know, no one person usually uh, could replace mm -hmm. Mel Blanc. It usually takes at least three people or two people, but certainly not one single person. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Jeff Bergman, I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's that good. And Eric Bowes is that good. Um, but 
they they are playing in the new Space Jam. Those guys. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't do the second Space Jam, but I but I remember working in the first one. Uh, we'd go have lunch together and in the whole commissary at Warner Brothers would hear of the Looney Tunes having lunch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there's too much ketchup on my hot dog, Doc. <laughs> you know, it was it was just really funny. All these people riffing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, is that something like because you've worked with those guys again on like various series or, or other? Oh, yeah, movies. is that yeah, something? Know. Is Space Jam something you guys kind of regularly reminisce on? Um, I don't know. We I don't you know I used to see those guys a lot more than I have in the past year because of COVID just threw a, a mm. an axe in the, into everything. But um, mm. you know, we had all worked together before before that and we've worked together since then of course and uh you know there's some of my favorite people in the world and uh it's even better when you get to work with them mm-hmm. yeah for sure and even the the live action cast is pretty cool and interesting because uh obviously you have michael jordan as himself along with a bunch of other nba players as themselves Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, but then you also have you know Wayne Knight <laughs> as uh, Michael Jordan's assistant. Oh, uh, and... he's so great! That guy, he's such a good actor, and he's such a funny, like a comedic actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's dead serious about his craft. You know, I mean, I, I hung around with him for a little bit, and we talked about a lot of stuff. And I just, I think the world of the guy. Mm-hmm. I always look forward to something that he'll be in. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely great. I, I always loved him in Seinfeld. And then mm. after that, I was just like, anything this guy's in, like, I'll watch because he's so yeah, funny. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and then you also have Bill Murray, who, who is also playing himself in the yes. movie, um, which uh, I, I don't think the Bill Murray in the movie is very far from the Bill Murray in real life. I think um, that I think you're right on the money with that. And I think that's why he was there. Yeah. So, yeah, well, so he's, friends, he's gotta be friends with Ivan Reitman because they all came from yeah, uh, Ghostbusters. You know, Second yeah, City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, Second City and Ghostbusters for sure. So what what did you think of uh, about um like for lack of a better word, in interacting with them in the movie? Um well live actors dressed up in green outfits. So they yeah. could be on a green screen and then they could animate characters over them. So the live actors are actually <clears throat> acting with actors in green suits that are saying the lines of the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how that's done. And then we add the voices or they've already got ours recorded and they animate to that. It's a, quite a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, the other voice that you did in Space Jam was uh, Elmer Fudd, who has kind of always been Bugs Bunny's arch nemesis throughout like yes. the whole Looney Tunes. So, I just love it that he's a, a brain dead hunter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing funny. You know, he goes from zero to 60. He's like a little boy, you know? Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting <laughs> rabbits. Uh, and then he gets mad. All right, rabbit, say your prayers. Come out of there, with your hands up, or I'll bless you. Yeah. Well, was that kind of fun to like play against yourself in a way, like switch back yeah. from Bugs to Elmer? Yeah, I've been doing it for years. I did it with uh, Nickelodeon, and uh, I did it on Futurama. I just, you know, I, I'm, I don't know how to do much else besides stuff like that. So mm-hmm. let's put it that way. Yeah. So um, obviously the Looney Tunes have been around for decades now. Um, and like Bugs Bunny has let, always been at the center uh, of the Looney Tunes. What, uh, why, why do you think Bugs has such a uh, enduring legacy? Uh, what is it about his trickster nature and attitude that, that makes him so memorable? Because um, he's a wise guy. Um, he thumbed his nose at convention, you know, society, rules, authoritarianism. Um, 
and he would fit in today, except that most people would make him look like a gentleman. <laughs> you know, Bugs never attacked anybody on an airplane over elbow room. <laughs> Bugs never tried to kill somebody because someone told him don't wear a mask, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. He, he'd he fit in, but be, he seemed like a gentleman <laughs> by mm-hmm. today's standards. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And um, as you have mentioned uh, a minute ago, you're a man of many voices. You've had a career in voice acting for over 30 years now. Uh, how do you keep things fresh? How, what's your process for like finding um, a, a new voice? And how, how do you go through that? It's um, you get inspired by what other people have in mind what they're planning like um on futurama it was such a concerted effort i mean the characters um were so beautiful and beautifully written and the design everything it just had everything going for it and then when it came down to me being entrusted to interpret them i thought long and hard before i opened my mouth and um Mm -hmm. you know i'm really conscientious about stuff like that plus if i don't get it right i I'll go out of my mind. I'm on the autism spectrum. So it's like, it has to go a certain way in my head. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's disastrous. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I guess like, do do you feel a lot of pressure? Like just with that kind of reputation as like, as a voice actor who's who's done all these different uh, fan favorite projects? Um, No, I don't. I'm at home with it. I mean, because I love the craft so much. I I remain passionate. If that's nervous energy, I don't know. But uh, but I still I get very excited over stuff and and I stay inspired. You know, those are the those are the key things Mm -hmm. to to not running out of gas. There's always something uh, that somebody can challenge you with. And, And Futurama, I have separation anxiety because I, that was such a great way uh, to express myself. I, I had so much fun mm-hmm. doing that. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, aside from Space Jam and then Futurama, uh, you've got a pretty big legacy of um, 90s TV shows like, like Doug, mm-hmm. Ren and Stimpy, Cat Dog, and uh, Extreme Ghostbusters even, which, which I loved because I'm, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. And, I didn't realize yeah. that you played Slimer until like a few years ago and was like, no wonder I, I really like Slimer in that series. Well, you, know, so, I, I, yeah. um, you know, I'm a journeyman. And so when somebody calls to, to do work, I mean, I, I'm open to doing anything that I can do. And I'm not that I'm not limited, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty much at home walking in the door and sitting in front of a mic. Um, mm-hmm as I've done thousands of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what's what, when someone like comes up to you and says like, Oh, I was such a huge fan of, you know, this show. Uh, you were such a big part of my childhood, like whether it's Doug or Ren and Stimpy or whatever. What, what does that mean to you? What, what's that experience like for, for you I'm, to have that kind of effect and influence? On I'm, I'm honored because I had my heroes. I had my, <clears throat> my gallery of heroes from uh, early television performers. Television was brand new when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it had only been around for about three or four years. And uh, so the early performers had a big effect on me. Guys like Sid Caesar and Jonathan Winters. Um, and then audio wise, it was Mel Blanc. It was people like Dawes Butler, Don Messick, the Hanna-Barbera guys. Um, they all, they all had profound effect on me. And, um, you know, for, for someone to say that that's how they feel about me, the way I felt about those guys. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's an honor really. Um, Mm -hmm. I was at a convention once and a bunch of military guys came up and these are guys men, full grown men that had flown missions over Afghanistan, telling me that they do mm-hmm. Futurama routines when they're in the cockpits of their planes. You know, yeah. it's like, I don't, want, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right bird could eat. <laughs> yeah, I was blown away. 
I thanked them for their service. And then I felt, I, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry because I was just so touched by the fact that, that it affected them like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, I know, uh, like, I, I've got, like, all, all, the whole Futurama series. And, and I know, like, with Space Jam in particular, that that's a movie that whenever, like, if I'm flipping the channels, not mm -hmm. that anyone young will understand what flipping the channel means today. But, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but when uh, yeah, when I'm flipping the channels and I see Space Jam on, I'll, I'll I will tune into that just to see like what what part it's at, and then like kind of stick through the rest of so it. So that's your that's so your It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, I see It's a Wonderful Life on TV. I don't care if it's in the middle of the movie. I'll stay and watch the rest of it. I'll, I do it every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and of course, there's Futurama. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask one like kind of Futurama question. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my favorite shows. And uh, what's what? What does that show's legacy mean to you? And uh, just all, all the voices that you did, because you didn't just do Fry. You did Fry. Uh, Zoidberg, Brannigan, like, do you have a favorite am amongst them? I, I can't say that I do. I mean, I enjoy those characters very much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think the world of the writing, you know, the writing was so, so good. And, um, and I felt lucky that I was in with these guys, you know, this creative bunch. Um, Philip J. Fry was just, you know, it was, I had an idea to do a character that I had never done before, which was my own voice, except mm -hmm. when I was 25. I was real whiny and complaining and, mm -hmm. easily, you know, all of, you know, oh man, I broke a string. Now what are we supposed to do? You know, I was a musician and it's like, oh, the amp blew up, ah, oh, fuck, you know. <laughs> I, I was like that, uh, annoying. And, um, and then um, the professor is a combination of doddering wizards and magicians and, you know, um, he's 147 years old, you know, and, and he probably farts dust, I, I figured, because he's that old. But but then um, Zap Brannigan, very pompous, you know, uh, she's a beautiful ship. I'm going to fly her brains out, dear. You know, and then, there, of course, there was Zoidberg. Um, the Zap Brannigan voice was a combination of all these big, dumb announcers I used to hear when I was growing up and listen to radio. These big guys who used to say, well, it's 12 minutes past the big hour of 12, you know, and they they have that hamburger helper of English, you know, with the, with the pauses and the adding of syllables. And I always, it killed me because I used to say, who talks like this? These guys are so jive, but it's funny. Um, but that's all there was when I was growing up is these guys that would go, can I ask you a question? You know, and it's like, come drop the phony voice. <laughs> And uh, oh yeah, and um, and Zoidberg was a he was a kind of co combination of uh, two different guys. Um, one was um, a character actor named Lou Jacoby, who was in the movie Arthur, and he would say, you know, what's it like to have all that money? You know, it doesn't suck. And uh, and then um, George Jessel was a vaudevillian performer, and he had kind of a marble mouth. Good evening, ladies and germs. You know, and so Zoidberg with all that stuff all over his face was, you know, it's like, your music is bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> I'm scuttling. <laughs> I'm not hearing you for some reason. I think I've lost your audio. Hmm. Yeah, you're muted for some reason on here. There it is. No. Ah, uh, you know, I'm not hearing it for some reason.
Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, there we go. Weird. Don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, yeah, my my question there was, uh, do you do you ever feel bad about like all the all the awful things that happened to Zoidberg in the show and just what he has to go through? Um, no, he's pretty resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's something there's something off about every character on that show. That's what I really like about it. There's such yeah. flawed people. It's almost like Seinfeld, you know? Yeah, they they yeah. were all like flawed or they were some kind of, some kind of uh, sociopathic or whatever. Um, but, but I think uh, that makes for interesting characters. Yeah, for sure. All right, and um, if you, like you said, um, you're not in the new Space Jam. Um, no. Yeah, but if you ever got the chance to play Bugs Bunny or any of the other Looney Tunes again, um, would you and like, how would you approach it this time? I, I would be glad to do that. I'm a journeyman, you know, it's like, um, whatever the assignment is, I'm up for it. Um, if I have a, a chance to uh, get to do it, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have separation anxiety with Futurama. I would love to see that come back. I'd love to mm -hmm. see, you know, some of the Nicktoons come back. I mean, I enjoyed those things very much when yeah, I yeah. did them and they, and they lasted, a, a, you know, they'll outlive me. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Billy, for uh, speaking. My pleasure. Today. Um, it was awesome. Again, huge thank fan. You. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. And uh, ho hope you're doing well. Take care. Excited for uh, too. whatever your next thing in the career brings. And there's a final word. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs>